usually get you down. Focus on cloud, location, data center industry, trends, the dynamic market. Well, hey, I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk, and I'm really excited today to be joined by Josh Bosquez. Josh is the Chief Technology Officer with Armor. Josh, thanks so much for joining. Great to see you. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, one of the things that I love about uh, these video discussions that we called Hawk Talks are getting to interface with industry leaders, those that have been in, um, you know, some form of the technology industry, you know, we come at it from the data center side, uh, but we love getting um, leaders on to talk about what they are seeing in the market and how the market is changing. You know, we're obviously in a market that changes a lot. Um, and I'm sure you've got some perspective on that. Before we start, you know, you're the, you're the CTO for Armor. Tell us just about your journey to get there and what that was like. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, cut my teeth. Uh, early late 90s uh, right into telco one of the largest telcos here in uh, in Dallas and so it was all around automation of data centers it was all infrastructure automation so much different than what we see today and so moving from there into an MSP that offered services on top of data centers was good so moving up the stack so it was just all around infrastructure automation then it went into compliance automation for services on top of the stack and then moving into that big thing that everybody called cloud, <laughs> and, then, and then moving into security. So I've kind of taken the journey with, with the market, if you would kind of say it yep. that way. So now here I am uh, running a, a cybersecurity shop. That's awesome. So we hear a lot about in, in the news and uh, just kind of in the mainstream about cybersecurity. It's obviously a, like a very broad term. But um, from your standpoint, like what do you see companies – doing or, or what's like the, the, the standard thing companies can do to protect themselves? I mean, you, you're in this world every day. You, you're an expert there. For companies that are listening, like what can they do? <laughs> it's interesting, right? So there'll be uh, chief security officers listening in and they're saying, you know, there's not one silver bullet and I'll probably answer the same. Uh, but I will say this is that if you're looking at what would be the most important, it would be user education. It would be that user education piece of knowing where a malicious activity could be, whether it be ransomware, whether it be answering emails that you don't understand, or uh, and then you would probably move into more of the antivirus and you know some basic toolings on the on the laptop. However, yep. it, it's all around uh, a user education. I would say is probably the number one. That's good. Well, I think it's important to you know as you think through as companies think through their approach you know, making sure that they're focused on that is probably a really important part of, of a strategy, so. Absolutely, because when you start thinking about, you know, as of late where uh, remote work has become uh, a top priority for a lot of organizations and uh, a lot of organizations were not ready for what was to come, where people were not in the office, where they protected all of the environment and now you're trying to protect them at home. So it brought a little bit of a different flavor and a little bit of a different challenge for a lot of these uh, executives to manage risk in the organization. Yeah, how have you seen, you know, if you think about the, the data center world and the cloud uh, market that's out there today, you know, have you seen the security aspect like change over the last five years? I mean, I know there's been obviously a lot of things happening. You mentioned one, which is just the environments changing from working in the office to remote and that process. But what are some of the other changes that you've seen that have impacted the market? Yeah, I mean, it's the same, right? When, so when you had the data center, you could touch it, you could feel it. I had the network cables. I understand how to protect network all the way down to storage. It was a kind of a well understood philosophy and model because it existed for 20 plus years. And then you move into the cloud, it's kind of that I don't see it, it's hands off. Mm -hmm. What are my new techniques that my security teams have to learn to what we call a different terrain? It's another aspect of security that you need to provide. So there's other learnings that need to be had of the new services that are coming online. There's education that needs to be had within your security teams that kind of map it right into your streamlined portfolio. So yeah. what I would say is made it more difficult made it uh, a lot broader and so it complicated uh, a lot of the security strategy more than ever yeah what what are the basic like security perspectives that managed services or data center providers um, are using or can use to make sure they're protecting themselves and their current customers 
Sure. No, that's a, that's a great question. You know, you, you standardize on sort of your security program around uh, how can I gain kind of some toolings that give me full visibility into an environment, uh, whether it be in a data center, which we call on-prem, or whether it be in a cloud, uh, there's still the same programs have to be taken into account as you move from network all the way down to hosts and all of the access controls and everything in between. Uh, there's a lot of MSPs that are offering that today. You know, so when we talk about what we're running here, it's the same. It's how do you build a cohesive platform and a cohesive, cohesive security program to be able to see, have visibility, as well as understand the full assets that are out there and all their vulnerabilities. And do you think, do you think that the M MSPs that are out there or data center operators that are out there you know, has this been something you feel like that they have been able to evolve with, you know, some of the things that you just mentioned? Or do you feel like that the market to an extent is still behind and always like trying to catch up? Uh, so maybe and maybe it's a bigger question, like, can you ever catch up enough? You know, but I mean, what 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 have you seen as far as like those companies and how they're really doing at that today? Sure. Yeah. You know, a lot of the organizations are, are leaning on MSPs to provide mm -hmm. a lot of those services, because when, you, when I talk about the complexity, the budgets within security teams or within mm -hmm. organizations has not changed. They're saying there's the same three guys or the same 10 guys or the same 15 guys. You guys are going to have to carry security into your program, no matter where any of your engineers are hosting, no matter what cloud they're using. And then what happens is uh, the security team is saying, well, they're in Azure, they're in Google, and they're in a data center. What do we do now? We're still trying to learn. <laughs> We're still trying to gain our certificates. And so what happens sure. is it's made rise to the, the MSPs of the world. The, the MSPs that are leveraging services and products, they become the expert, experts uh, within the security compliance space and then they leverage tools like, you know, that we provide. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so how do you like see companies, and, and this might've been kind of, going off your last answer, but, you know, focusing on that, like unified security. Um, I mean, does it tie back to that or is it different? No, 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 no. I think it ties that. I think that's the nirvana for any type of, I would say CISO, any type of CIO that's trying to run an organization. They, they, they don't want to see tons of tools come online. It becomes point solutions. Uh, what they now are managing is a multitude of different problems, right? Whereas I have multiple contracts, I have multiple use cases around how I'm attacking my security program. So the unification approach allows for them to, to see it a little, a little bit more simply. How can I simplify for them this complex world? in the complex world of all of these new security approaches that are coming up daily with all of these new services that are coming online. How can I unify for them and make it simple for them? Because at the end of the day, you need them to be able to see margins, gain revenue all around a simplistic product. So when you start thinking about what should their approach be, unification has to be at the top of their list. Yeah. I, I always, you know, previously to, to uh, doing the work we're doing with data center Hawk, I work for a, a uh, global real estate company that was helping companies make kind of their data center infrastructure decisions. And, you know, part of the challenge is just getting everybody on the same page, you know, and really trying to unify the, the different business sectors to make it the best decision. Yeah. It's really know, hard. You, and well, and, and you touched on it, which is the reason why, at least in my opinion, that it becomes a hard decision to make across, uh, you know, the collaborative groups is there's different skill set learnings amongst the groups. Mm -hmm. So the understanding yeah. of some of these problem statements aren't are, aren't all equal. So to come yeah. to consensus, it becomes pretty hard because everybody's speaking a different language because you have a different depth of knowledge. Yeah, that's that's a great great point. Okay, I actually. Um, researched a few like statistics around like cyber crime and cybersecurity. So if there's anyone watching that does not think this is a big deal, let me just read off a few things. One is, and I'm sure Josh, from your standpoint, you'd agree, but one is, um, you know, in 2020, this was from a risk-based security research firm. They said in the first three quarters of 2020 alone, this isn't even 2021, there were 36 billion uh, data breaches of records, you know, out there in the market today. Um, you know, the cost of cyber crime from a, a group called Risk IQ Research, uh, you know, costs organizations that the amount they have was 2.9 million every minute uh, when they go through something like that. Um, and then if you don't think that's a big deal, like the I, uh, IDC, which is a research firm, you know, they predict just that that there will, there will be 55.7 billion connected devices by 2025. So, you know, that's another really interesting thing is 
the management of the security around just devices. You know, 15 years ago, our our device number, the devices in our home was a lot less than it is today and, and uh, businesses as well. So just with those statistics and, you know, it's it's almost maybe unimaginable to go a week without hearing, hey, this retailer is announcing that, you know, 50 million user uh, information, the user's information was, was you know, breached. Um, you know, how can they, how can companies prepare around this? I mean, it's, it's also like with the ransomware and stuff like that. I mean, how do they prepare for this stuff? Sure. That's right. I mean, all of those statistics we obviously believe and we see, right? So for us, the minute somebody says that I'm putting something on the network, whether it be a phone, whether it be a server, a VM, a device, uh, it is 100% getting attacked within seconds. So we know that a lot of the malicious activity is just waiting for something to hit the network. Yep. Yep. And so, so when you start getting in front of this, you say, well, great. The names that I see that are online where I see a breach, they're some of the biggest brands that we know, which have some of the largest security budgets. So you sit there and you're saying, okay, Josh, this doesn't <laughs> add up. They're spending a ton of money to mm -hmm. be secure and they're still getting breached. Absolutely. Because it all revolves around expertise. Just because mm. you're spending the money doesn't mean that you're doing the right things, right? So when you start looking at preparation for I am a business and my brand is technology or I sell shirts, doesn't matter. You have to start thinking about who do I bring online to be the expert or the partner to help me be mm -hmm. secure? Because like I talked about, the amount of knowledge needed as some of these services are, are, are changing on a daily basis to stay in front of that and it's not yep. your competency, yep. you definitely want to partner up. And I'm an advocate for a, a managed service provider. Go to an MSP, get expert help because this is what they do on a daily basis. They keep up with it. And if you want to partner together, uh, you, you can, but leverage an expert uh, that understands security to help you with this problem statement. Because again, the risks are high, the brands that you're seeing that are coming out online of being breached, they're spending tons of money, but not to say that they're not experts, except that uh, the money is not uh, showing the outcomes that they want. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a what you described is certainly an approach that companies get comfortable with on other parts of their business, you know, going out, finding an expert that can help in an area that traditionally companies don't have the expertise in. The one thing I would say that you brought up is a good point or, or I would add to is that it changes so fast, you know, to think that, you know, a company, unless they're spending a lot of money investing on team members that are really tracking the technology and the changes that are going on. You know, I'd imagine it's almost impossible to to keep up with internally. So, um, you know, it it totally makes sense to me, you know, and we're a, a smaller business to have, you know, partners that help you with that. Tell, tell me about you said or you mentioned that it's, you know, it's very large brand names that we see in the news a lot. Do you also see like attacks happening on smaller businesses? Like what do you think is the approach that, you know, the, that a smaller business needs to take? And are they are they, you know, being attacked, too? Uh, great question, because everybody's equal in the world of cybersecurity, right? For them, when they're attacking somebody, sometimes it is a brand, sometimes yep. it's for malicious, and sometimes it's targeted. Uh, most of the time, it's just general approach to I see an open device, and now I'm going to attack it with my 50 or 150 set of attacks. And it could be for different reasons. You know, not They won't know necessarily until they get into that device to say, okay, now I understand where I'm at, and let's start kind of adding on to the attack space for me to see if I can move laterally or gain other, other data associated to it. So when you, when you look at uh, some of the attack vectors as, as what we call it is that everybody's equal. So when you look mm. at the big brands and you look at the small brands, you are getting attacked in the same manner, the same speed with the same attacks as the big guys. It's yeah. just when they find that vulnerability, now they're going to start approaching different set of attacks to expose it. Yeah. I mean, I'd almost, you know, to your point, everyone is equal, but I'd almost say to the smaller businesses, it feels like you've, you've got a harder fight because, you know, a lot of bigger companies have teams that at least are focused on this. You know, a lot of smaller companies probably wake up when that happens and they go, oh my gosh, we now we're, now we're in the reactive, you know, mode of this and not being proactive on it. Absolutely. When you start thinking about, you know, when you said, okay, are they equal? They are. But from a defense perspective, they're not, right? They're the mm -hmm. smaller, smaller guys that are that are spending their money on their core competency of their business. I sell yeah. a shirt. 
or I create shoes. So I'm selling these things as my business. And so what a lot of these small businesses don't necessarily realize is that every company is a technology company. You yeah. are oh, leveraging yeah. technology to yeah. deliver your service or product. And the one thing that you really want to keep your eye on is risk. And so my risk for my business, there is an IT portion to it because you are a technology company, which comes with it. You have to have a cybersecurity sort of program in place. Yeah, that's really good. So, um, you know, in the data center world, we you, know, you hear a lot about compliance, you know, and this is typically a combination between a data center facility and the end user themselves and them checking off a number of different things to ensure compliance within typically their industry. Um, how have you seen those changes take place and has that impacted things from a positive on the cybersecurity side of things? Yeah, that, you know, good, great question. They certainly have have changed. When you looked at the data center itself, it was all around physical kind of, kind of compliance. How do I keep it uh, compliant from a perspective of HIPAA, PCI, high yep. How do I how do I keep those controls in place? Well, when you move to the cloud or as you move newer technologies, there are other controls that are getting additive as the compliance standards are changing as they're getting updated as they are maturing as well with the time. So there are additive approaches that are a little bit more complex uh, that are ha that other organizations are having to apply uh, comply with. So if you mm -hmm. look at P PCI and as it starts coming out with newer and newer mandates. Again, from the compliance perspective, saying for me, it's all security, but from a compliance perspective is those skill sets have to grow as well because they're yeah. putting additional steps in place for you to stay compliant, which ultimately will keep you secure. And what it does is it changes the skill set, skill set dynamics of need. So now you need stronger folks, different controls, different technology needs, different programs. Yeah strategy. So it's all becoming, when I say, you know, the, the security space, I, I involve compliance in that same statement in that the complexity keeps growing. Uh, how do you, how do most customers come to a company like Armor? I mean, do they come with their hair on fire? Like, oh my gosh, we're in trouble. We need help right now. Or do you see most of them coming more from a proactive, uh, you know, approach? And I'm sure you all will receive both type of inquiries, but you know, how do you see the typical customer like coming to your company? So the good news is we're channel focused. So we support a lot of the MSPs, right? So sure. the MSP, the folks that are, that those customers are going to is saying, I just had a breach. Uh, I need to be compliant because I'm now taking credit cards or, you know, I am a, a medical facility, so I have to be compliant. And they go to these MSPs and these MSPs now need a prescription, some service that's easy to get them online because in history, there was this long, you know, in data center world, we thought of it as a procurement time frame. Oh, I yeah. need a server, I got to order it. Then there's this long breath, it hits the dock, we bolt it up. So these type of services are no different. So when you had a security compliance, it was the same process. Let me order your gear, let me bolt it up, let me get you online. There's this long process to see security or compliance. So with solutions like ours, what we do is we help MSPs get those customers online quickly because they are coming to them with their hair on fire. They are coming to them like, I just got ransomware. I don't know what to do. Help me, please. Or I have a compliance audit coming up. Yeah. X, Y, Z controls, Mr. MSP, will you help us? And our tools and our platforms and our services are what fuel that uh, conversation for them to be able to help those customers. What will impact the future of the cybersecurity market and world the most over the next you know, five years? What are the things that you see that will really change you know, this area of the market? Yeah, I mean, it's the volume, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the volume alone, you, you, you actually said it earlier. You said, you know, there's millions and millions of devices coming online. There's, and there are new pathways for them to come online. So once you start looking at IoT devices where the mm -hmm. latest other services, when you, when you start looking at devices as they become smarter and smarter and they're doing bigger and better things of like your watch now has LTE. So now you're starting to see the volume starting mm -hmm. to come in where there was already a shortage of security personnel to be able to cover what we had at that time. So the devices, the volume, the scale by which is uh, that's out there is outpacing the security experts that are out in the world today. Yeah, and it's no doubt that those are the reasons why this market is you know expected to continue to grow and. Josh, your feedback's been great. If you want to learn more about uh, Armor, I'm assuming they can go to your website. It's just armor.com. 
Um, but Josh, thank you so much. I look forward to it'd be fun to do this here in 12 months and hear how much things have changed. And But appreciate your, um, your feedback and look forward to the next time we can chat. That's great. I appreciate it. Thank you.